This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship with First Presbyterian Church of San Bernardino. This is our service for Sunday, November 15th. Today, if you're still watching this this morning, we have a congregational meeting at 1130 to elect our new officers for the year and to approve Pastor Sandy's terms of call. You should have or will receive a Zoom invitation that says specifically congregational meeting. Please join us if you can. Next week will be Sandy's last week away. Pastor Jeff Gaines will be preaching on reentry, on how it is that she comes back, how we meet her, how we finish this season of renewal. On Monday, November 23rd at 7 p.m., there is a Zoom interfaith Thanksgiving gathering, the same gathering that we held in this sanctuary last year. There's information and a flyer about that in the church newsletter. Now, let us take a breath. Let us rejoice. Let us worship. Oh 
And so we come to the time with the children or the time with all God's children, if you're listening in. And one of the things that I will be talking about today in my sermon is gratitude and practices of gratitude. And there is a way that we can practice gratitude right now or at the end of the day. It's called the examine, but you can think about it with your fingers. So I want you to take a breath right now. That's the first part of the examine. Take a breath. Now I want you to think about your day or your week. What is something that you have been grateful for this week? And now I want you to take a moment to feel. How does your gratitude make you feel? How does thinking about that make you feel? And how do you feel right now about your day or about your week? My gratitude was for the people who are here helping us film this so that we can have worship together in these days. And it makes me feel calm and happy because even though it doesn't always go exactly how we want, everybody has a sense of calm about them and is flexible and are letting things go and helping do what they can. And then pray. Talk to God about the thing that you're grateful for and about how that makes you feel. Thank you, God, for the opportunities you've given us in this time and for the way the presence of others makes me feel glad. And finally, look ahead. How will you go into tomorrow? How will you go into the rest of this week? This is a simple exercise that you can do as you're going to bed, as you're falling asleep, in the morning, as you think about the day that passed, how it works for you. Breathe, be grateful, feel, pray, and look ahead. Join us as we are grateful today. Amen. Our first scripture lesson this morning is from Matthew chapter 5, the first 10 verses. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth.
Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Our second scripture this morning is from the book of Luke, chapter 17. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, 10 lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Why do we set a time Why do we set aside time to give thanks? This is the question I was given this month. And then, as happens when one has something on one's mind, I began bumping into ideas of gratitude and blessing everywhere I looked. So I know I'm a week early, but I felt drawn to the idea of gratitude all month. Jeff Gaines will preach next week as we prepare to conclude our season of renewal and welcome Sandy home. And then the following week, Advent begins. So today, let's talk about blessings and gratitude. Some of the ideas I'm speaking about today come from Diana Butler Bass's book, Grateful, and some come from a podcast between Kate Bowler and Jan Richardson. Blessings and gratitude. I'd like to work with these words a bit. What does it mean to be blessed? Sometimes we think it means we have lots of nice things, So we are blessed. This is maybe our cultural meaning of blessed, the hashtag blessed idea. Things that we've earned show that we are blessed. My shiny new car, hashtag blessed. A raise at my job, hashtag blessed. These are good things, things for which we are grateful. But this is not what scripture means by blessing. We are blessed because we are. Because we are created. Because we are loved. We human beings like to make things transactional. I was taught about the Beatitudes that these were the qualities for which we should strive We should try to become poor in spirit, meek, merciful, pure, so that God would bless us. Which makes me wonder if those preachers just skipped those who mourn. Or the same verses in Luke, where it's simply, blessed are the poor, not the poor in spirit. 
Other parts of the Sermon on the Mount give us things for which to strive. Love your enemies comes to mind, but not the blessings. Because God's blessings come first. In the Hebrew scriptures, God blesses Abraham because God called him. God blesses the Israelites because God called them. Jesus blesses the children because they're there. So picture it. Jesus standing on the mount, looking out across the crowds of people. And he is moved to offer blessing for who people already are. There is no if then here. These are the people he is blessing. This is who they are. Those listening to Jesus are the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, and the persecuted. This is still those who are listening to the words of Jesus. Jesus is blessing the crowd, and Jesus blesses the crowd still. Blessed are you who are watching this at 10.30 Sunday morning. Blessed are you who are worshiping Sunday afternoon, or Monday, or Saturday. Blessed of you, blessed, blessed are you who are tired of watching church and watch it anyway. Blessed are you who are tired of watching church and are not hearing this. Blessed are you who are created in the image of God. Blessed. We know that we are blessed, not through anything we've earned, but because we have God's blessing. Kate Bowler and Jan Richardson talk on Kate's podcast, Everything Happens, about being blessed by God. Kate was diagnosed with stage four cancer at age 35 as the mother of a one-year-old. Jan suddenly became a widow after only three years of marriage. These women know heartache and pain, but they believe in blessing. Jan writes blessings, and when Gary died, she did what she knew how to do. She wrote a book of blessings. They are not easy blessings. There are no hashtag catchphrases, but they are blessings that heal blessings that carry through. And Kate and Jan talk about this, about the hard things, about grief and loss. And yet they carry the knowledge that they are blessed, that God is still blessing. Carrying that knowledge, firmly believing that we are blessed and that it is not transactional, we have not earned blessing, that being blessed does not somehow mean that God loves us more. That opens us up to gratitude. Being blessed does not mean God loves us more, but cultivating gratitude helps us love God more. Because we know we are blessed, we offer thanks. Many nations have harvest festivals. But Diana Butler Bass tells us that in the ancient world, the Israelites did things differently than the other nations. The other nations held their festivals to ask for blessing. They sacrificed in order to receive something. Only the Israelites offered their sacrifices because they had already received the blessing. They were thank offerings. And what? If we had public festivals to offer our thanks, what if we came together, not just around our own dinner tables, but in the parks and on the streets, to acknowledge our blessings? Obviously, we can't do that right now. 
But what if we had a day of thanksgiving when we are able to gather again? Would offering thanks together make a difference in our deep divides? Thanksgiving is and should be communal, but each of us can also cultivate our own habits of thanksgiving. In the scripture, I read the leper sees that he has been healed, and he runs back to Jesus to offer his thanks. Does Jesus love this leper more than he loves the nine who didn't run back? Do they become not healed? because they did not run back and give thanks? Of course not. They did exactly what Jesus told them to do, went to the priests to be certified as clean. But look at the joy in this man's life. He praised God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself before Jesus and thanked him. He took the opportunity. And I expect he spent the rest of his life glad that he did. Bass and numerous studies show us that if we cultivate a heart of thanksgiving, we will learn to be our better selves. If we can learn to be thankful for the past, not nostalgic for what was good in the past but isn't any longer, but truly thankful for all the moments in our past that have brought us to where we are. And if we can be thankful in the present, seeing the world not just right in front of us, but all around us, if we can look widely and view the whole picture and find ways to be grateful now, these things change us and prepare us for the future They prepare us with a different way of looking, a different way of seeing. And so we become ready to face what's next with resilience. So how do we do this? How do we become people who see with gratitude? I'm not going to offer anything new here, but I will offer some reminders of things we can do. We can start by saying thank yous. Sometimes I think most of us have learned to do this since we were little. Is it different if we are doing it with intent instead of by rote? We say thank you to the checker at the store and the person who bags our groceries. As I'm sure many of us do, I try to catch their eye and say something as simple as, hey, thank you for your help. Every evening after dinner, As Oliver is trying to get away from the table, he turns to me and says, thank you for dinner, Mom. And when he helps cook, he says, thank you for dinner, me and Mom. It makes us laugh, but it also lifts my heart every time. When we realize someone has helped us, we can go back to them like the leper did to Jesus and express our gratitude. We can say thank you with intent. The late President George H.W. Bush has a legacy that carries on, that seems to be the thing that people write about him. One thing, among others, but one thing that in particular made him stand out. He had a practice of gratitude He is known for writing thank you notes. It is said he would write his thank you note to his host in the car on the way home from an event. He made it a practice to write notes every day. Whether the gratitude was big or small, President Bush offered a handwritten thank you note, signing it, all the best, George Bush. I expect people have kept these notes and cherish them. When we note our gratitude, we can make it a point to send a note about it. That will seal it in our mind and offer a blessing to the other person. 
Sandy is really good at writing thank you notes. It's a discipline she practices. And I know any of us who have received such notes are blessed to receive them. I am terrible at writing thank you notes. I'm sorry. I cherish gifts and I acknowledge things people do, but so many times I never quite get the note written. So I will work on that. Because I do think acknowledging gratitude helps us see it. We can also keep a gratitude journal or name three things for which we are grateful as we crawl into bed or post our gratitudes where others can see them. As I said in the time with all God's children, we can practice the prayer of examine and look at our day with gratitude. We can do all these things and chances are we'll do them for a while and then drift off, but that's okay because they still matter. If we practice looking with eyes of gratitude, we get better at it. And if we change the way we perceive, we change the way we perceive, even if our specific habits come and go. And so, let us remember that we are blessed because we are created and we are loved. And let us remember to turn back and praise God and say thank you so that we can love God and those made in the image of God more and more. Amen. O oh God, our Creator, we are in awe of your amazing imagination. You revealed yourself in sunshine and snow, in turning leaves and towering mountains. Most of all, you show your profound creativity in the variety of people you have created and loved. We thank you for your ongoing creation, for the splendor and promise of each new day, for the hope of the new thing that you create in our midst daily, and for the grace with which you create us anew when we feel old and tired. And we marvel at the mercy by which you, who set the galaxies whirling in the heavens, come nonetheless into our lives and care about our struggles, our uncertainties, as we strive to be your disciples and servants. O oh Lord, our hearts are full as we come before you this day. We have taken time in the past couple of weeks to remember the saints who have gone before us. We have celebrated them and given thanks for what they have meant to us. And yet we are saddened by the loss of so many we would want to still be with us. We are preparing 
to choose new lead leaders to guide this part of your church and make decisions about the lives as a community of faith seeking to do your will. We are working to know what resources we will have to do what you call us to do in this place. As we deal with all the rancor exhibited during the recent election, we strive to enter the seasons of Thanksgiving and Advent with joyful hearts at your continued love for us who often fall short of living out your gracious intention. Turn us more steadily towards the peace you would have us live and share with others of your creation. Redeeming God, forgive the busyness that too often lets us turn away from your gracious invitation. For, forgive the quickness with which we turn away from the pain of our brothers and sisters and sometimes see to resign ourselves to that which we know would sadden you. And forgive, we pray, all the ways in which we fail to be your welcoming community. Forgive the hard-heartedness that lets each of us draw our own exclusive circles and decide with whom we want to share your good news. O oh God, our sustainer and comforter, surround with your love and consolation all who suffer this day in body or spirit. Give hope to those overwhelmed by circumstances, those without homes in our own streets, and those whose homes and hopes were swept away by storms in Central America and other parts of your world. Creating and redeeming, redeeming God Inspire us now with your vision. As we wonder what the future holds for us, help us to remember that you hold that future. Help us indeed to turn to you in faith when we don't know what to do. Help us not to strain at gnats but to find you in all we meet. All this we are bold to ask in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, who invited us all to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And I leave you with this final blessing from the book by Jan Richardson. Blessing that does not end. From the moment 
it first laid eyes on you. This blessing loved you. This blessing knew you from the start. It cannot explain how. It just knows that the first time it sat down beside you, it entered into a conversation that had already been going on forever. Believe this conversation has not stopped. Believe this love still lives. The love that crossed an impossible distance to reach you, to find you, to take your face into its hands and bless you. Believe this does not end, that the gesture once enacted endures. Believe this love goes on, that it still takes your face into its hands, that it presses its forehead to yours as it speaks to you in undying words, that it has never ceased to gather your heart into its heart. Believe this blessing abides. Believe it goes with you always. Believe it knows you still. And may the love of God, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the friendship of God's own spirit, Go with you still. Amen. Amen.